I am Caleb, and with me here is I'm David, and we are we're here for our invitation E3 2012 Invitational Show matches. We're going to give you a quick rundown of how that's going to work. So what we've done is we have actually brought out one of the, if not the best, probably David, would you agree with me that this is probably the best tournament team for World Absolutely. of Tanks right now? And so we've brought them out here to E3. We have a bunch of teams lined up to play against them to face off for 25,000 gold. It's a single battle, winner takes all. So we have this battle coming up right now. We'll go to that, go to that in just a minute. As David said, our, our map for today is, or for this first battle at least, is mines. David, what's the, what's the biggest thing that stands out to you just from an initial perspective, tactical perspective here on, on mines? With mines, the number one thing is always the hill. There are very few strats where you don't actually need it, but for the most part, if you can get a scout onto that thing right at the beginning, you can see everything on the other team. Absolutely. Looking at, looking at the map here, I think it's, it's pretty obvious that's a, that's a pretty massive kind of control spot. It controls the whole map from there pretty much, right? That hill in the center. Yes, it's got fantastic firing lines on the rest of the uh, map there. And of course, if you can fire on it, then you can probably see it as well. So it's really important to hold it for as long of the match as you can. Uh, Absolutely. So, what do we, what are we seeing here from NDP? You're over on NDP's side. What does it look like they're they're lining up to do here? Well, we've got an AMX 5100, an IS-3, a T32, a GW Panther, two Chaffees, and a Tier 2 Light. So I would assume that they're just going to take some spread control of the map. Looks like they're setting their scouts to the island in the west and into town in the east. So they're trying to play some hill control here, keep their artillery in the back, and just see what's coming at them. All right, from Simp there, they made that initial push right onto the hill, obviously right off the bat. Uh, they wanted to get up there with those chaffies, some, some pretty fast tanks. I'm actually a really big fan of the chaffee personally. Uh, I really love the Chaffee, so I, I like seeing seeing the Chaffees in action here. Uh, we also have a single scout out on the on the far west. Looks like he's just he's just sitting there spotting for anything to come across, and uh, kind of looks like NDP is doing something similar with that medium at way out there. Obviously, we're seeing a, a pretty strong push in the center with with two heavies. Each each team is doing a pretty strong push in the center. Uh, NDP here has already lost control of the hill. It looks like they managed to get a T1 Cunningham just underneath the eastern side, so they're proximity lighting that Chaffee up there. And as far as scouts go, when you're looking to brawl, it's probably the 2801 is best, but if you need a combination Agreed. of both scouting and firepower, the Chaffee is the best one. I, I absolutely agree with that, and it's, it's so much more maneuverable than the 2801. It can turn on a dime. The 2801 has that real long 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 turn radius it feels like turning an aircraft absolutely and of course if you're looking for maximum maneuverability the answer is always the 50-2 of course of which course. surprisingly is not in this battle at all that, that is surprising I, I honestly that was one of the first things i expected to see but we obviously we obviously don't see that here um as i said though i am really glad to see the chaffee because it's a tank that you don't see a whole lot in these you don't see the chaffee a whole lot and i'm really i'm really glad to see that that is, that is pretty Absolutely. Awesome. I'm pretty sure the reason they avoided a 50-2 here was they were expecting some sort of scout brawl up there on the top of the hill. So they wanted something a little more firepower to guarantee that they could take it. Absolutely. So it looks like both teams are kind of they're kind of camping out a little bit, trying to figure out what the other team is doing. Trying to figure out how they're gonna how they're gonna break the enemy's the enemy's initial shell there that they try to build to protect protect themselves. I'm kind of surprised these Chaffees aren't being a little more aggressive on the hill, though. That that surprised me. They're not in real great spots to, to spot a whole lot. Right now, I think they're waiting for something to kind of come to them, try and do a little bit of circle strafing around it, something along those lines. I really like how NDP brought two T-32 here, which are mostly used for their hull down position, which is when the hull of the tank, everything besides the turret, is uh, hidden behind some sort of terrain like a rock or the edge of a hill because the front of the T-32, uh, on the turret at least, is very hard to penetrate. Absolutely, yeah. And I think this is the perfect map, especially for the U.S. heavies, because they have that very 
excellent depression, so you can get up on that hill and you can you can hit your enemy when he can't even shoot you. That's another great point. That is one thing that NDP doesn't have in the rest of their tanks. The AMX 5100 is notorious for not having elevation and yes, depression. Yes, it is. <laughs> so what about the RD lineups? This is kind of interesting. We only have a tier three on on, uh, on NDP with an SU-26 with a GW Panther on, on Simp. Well, I guess NDP wasn't thinking that artillery would be too important in this match. The SU-26 is great for its tier, but even with heat rounds, it's not going to penetrate most of these tanks unless they've turned. Yeah, uh, and, and if, you know, with HE rounds, it's, it's just, I don't think it's going to do a whole lot from, to most of these tanks. All right, we see some, some movement here from Simp with the Chaffee. I'm not sure they've spotted that one up. Oh, and there goes the T1 Cunningham spotting for NDP. That was just a quick little poke by Simp, and they're back again. The, the Chaffee is hiding it once again. Up, oh, looks like an arty shot there after the Chaffee. It's a great by move by Simp, getting aggressive, taking out those eyes, giving themselves more control of the map here. Yeah, absolutely. I think more than any, just about any other game, uh, eyes are kind of the key in, in tanks, you know, especially when it comes to this this tournament kind of real tactical level You need those eyes to know where the other tanks are if you can take eliminate your enemy's ability to see While maintaining your own you have a huge advantage on the opposing team Looks like NDP might be gearing up for some sort of push onto the heel here uh, and a lot of public matches or clan wars most teams don't like to push heavies on top of the hill because there's usually a whole lot of artillery and they'll just pound you before you get to the top. But in this situation, there's a GW Panther, which is pretty good, but it's not fearsome enough to scare off three different heavies trying to take the top. Yeah, and you're only going to see a round or two before they're over if they make, the, if they make a good push from that GW Panther. You're only going to see a round or two, I think, before they're over. Oh, the Chaffees. We, we have a Chaffee and a T2 Light here moving up, moving up the west flank from Simp see what they're going to spot here. Oh, and they've, they have spotted the 3601. It doesn't look like they've, they haven't seen that arty yet. I'm kind of surprised there. They have not yet spotted that arty, so that's going to be, that's, it's pretty interesting that they missed that. That's, that's right there. The T2 went right by that artillery piece and didn't spot him. Well, he's stuck behind that rock, which is a great place to be. Yeah. I'm pretty sure an SU-26 can fire onto the ramp of the hill from there, but he can't fire too much further than that. So one thing Simp does not have to worry about is the possibility of being counter batteried which is when one artillery fires on top of another artillery. For sure. Uh, and if they do, in all honesty, with just an SU-26, they haven't lost a whole lot. If they do get counter batteried it's not a major, major blow. Uh, whereas the GW Panther is something you definitely want to protect. Oh, it looks like we're seeing a, ma a big push here by NDP onto the hill. Oh, they're definitely taking some fire, but it looks like they have, they have taken that hill for sure. SU-26 is absolutely hammering that T-32. Yes, he is, and, and that T-32, I'm just waiting for him to take that last shot up, and there he, there he goes. That's a lot of firepower on that hill. That's going to be really hard. That's going to be really, really hard to dislodge. Simp is definitely going to back off with his 5100. Otherwise, that SU-26 will absolutely tear it up. Yeah, Most agreed. tanks can repel uh, round from artillery a little bit, but French tanks are notorious for having very thin armor, and pretty much an artillery of any tier, a tank of any tier, can penetrate it and do some serious damage. Yeah, the benefit, yeah. Though, and they just lost that Chaffee, too, that was on the hill. Simp did. The benefit of the French tanks, which kind of compensates for that whole area, is that they have an autoloader, so they can fire up to six rounds, uh, close, closely spaced, before they have to reload the entire clip. Whereas most tanks, in between shots, they have eight, ten seconds. The AMX 5100, I believe, has about 2.8 now? 2.8, yeah, 2.8, 2.5, it's right around there, between each shot. And then I don't remember the exact reload time on the whole clip. It's somewhere between 30 and 40 seconds, I believe. It's I think it might be up to about a minute. But is it really? Is it really? With 100 millimeter. Yeah, which it's, is it's significant enough that, <laughs> that you don't want to get caught in a fight while reloading that clip. Up, so Simp has the, their Chaffee They're going around the north side here towards the cap. 
And what what does Simp have back there? Back by their cap. It looks like they just have a 3601 and artillery back by their cap. So we'll see how this little chaffy run turns out. It's not looking real good for Simp, so they, they need this they need these eyes back here. Figure out what's what else is back here, what's hanging back where. It's a very smart move by NDP right now. There's only one gap in their entire front line, and that was in the eastern city over there. But they moved their French tank, which is the fastest tank they have remaining, over there to make sure that nothing's going to stream in the back and take out their artillery or, or flank their tanks. Absolutely. At Simp here, you can tell they're just kind of waiting for that push from, from NDP. They know it's coming, and there's not much else they can do. They're pretty much at NDP's mercy right now. I think positionally speaking, they they can't really push. Their IS-3 is already taking fire here. And it is definitely not looking great for Simp. At this point, it's definitely a defensive game. Absolutely, yeah. They, Which could play out to their advantage. I've seen a lot of teams who have been down even more than this come back simply because they can fire, move, and it's on, a, on the other team to try and get behind them. That might have sealed it right there, though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that... And their AMX 5100 is just getting torn up. He's, he has, he's absolutely surrounded. Now here's um, a really smart move by Sim. They were was, trying was, to get their scout into the caps to force NDP to choose between finishing off the rest of the team or going back to save their own cap, which would have lost in the game had they not been able to take it out. Yeah, I think it was a, it was a perfectly timed push by NDP too. They, they pushed at just the right time and took that hill. Not much Sim could do. I don't think at that point. There's not a whole lot they can do now. And there it is. So NDP has beaten Simp in this first round. Congratulations to NDP for sure. That was that was a very significant significant victory, I think. And we saw some some very solid tactics.